Hello everyone, my name is Legend Ronnie and this game is Rise of Civilization. This video is going to be all the advanced and all the elite commanders. These are the green, are the advanced and the elite are the blue ones. Obviously the purple ones are the epic and the yellow ones are the legendary. I'm gonna talk about these commanders and I'm gonna talk about all of them, including talents and everything. So how would you best benefit from this commander or if they are any good at all let me get into the game and you know what i'm gonna start with tomoe gozin and then i'm gonna start with lancelot how about that right so tomoe gozin tomoe gozin she is a very easy to upgrade commander all you have to do is just open silver chest open your daily silver chest and the free gold chest or how many gold chests you're going to be able to obtain from your events you will be able to max her skills very very easy maybe much faster than any other epic or legendary definitely faster than legendary she will be very very good once her skills are maxed out now you can read her skills yourself, you can see 30% attack, 5% attack, 5% march speed to the archers, additional rage, skill damage bonus, as long as she is second in command, and then you have damage reduction to the main target when she is using her main skill. Now where could she best be used? She is a very good second in command to nukers. Alright, so you heard it correct. So if you put her with CPO, it's not really gonna benefit that much at all. She has to be paired with nukers. Now, the best one that I would suggest that she could uh, work with would be Herman, because they have a very good synergy with the skills. They both have Archer attack and Archer's Mars speed. If you go on the Archer talent path, you'll see that it's also a significant amount of march speed to your archers so this could give you a quite significant mobility to your archers this is gonna help you to either get faster to the battlefield or retreat from the battlefield i prefer mobility in the game it's very very important you can do a lot of things you can catch players if they run you can keep pounding them uh, from from uh, while they're retreating and Mars speed has a very important role in my opinion that's why cavalry it's so popular into the game right now people are saying because they do they do nuke they do damage they do that as well because it's very easy to max out the legendary minamoto but they also have mobility you get you can get done a lot of things so that's why this is the best pair that I would see but as a second in command so wherever you want to use your Tomoe she so should be a second in command any other nuker she can work with any other nuker but in my opinion the best spot would be with Herman now the second spot is gonna be with Budika I use them like that and they, they work uh, very well this Another very important thing that you should keep in mind about Tomoe is that she is very good and useful in the lower levels of the game. You can see that I have her at 5 star, well I don't really advise you to get her above 4 star. All you need is to unlock her 4 skill and that's it. If you can do that at level 20, that's perfect. You unlock her 4 skill to be able to, to max it out and then that's it, you don't need to get her any higher. Because she, as a second in command, it doesn't need it. All you need is her skills. So Herman first, then Budika. After that, you can pair her with any other nuker. And that could be even Kusunoki. Kusunoki is an archer commander as well. If you actually want with uh, Sun Tzu or uh, Pelagius or any other commander. But as long as it's for purpose of nuking. So any other nuker, you want to pair her Minamoto. YSG, she's gonna 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 do great. Now, in terms of her talents, because mine is five stars. Back, back then it was a little bit uh, different. She, I was keep using her killing stuff, so she was gaining levels very fast because she's a blue commander. And just to see a difference, she's level forty-one, 
and she needs 640,000 to go to the next level. And Richard is level 42, but one level is not really much of a difference, and he needs 1.1 million. So that's almost double the legendaries, it's almost double the experience to level them up. So obviously, yeah, keep using her, she managed to gain levels. But as I mentioned, four stars, that's more than enough just to unlock her skills. Now, in terms of her, of her talents, if you want to make a utility for your Tomoe Gozen, I just draw this picture. In my opinion, level 25 is more than he needs. At, with four, 24 talents. If you want to check what those talents that I've just put, you can check them in game. It's gathering and Mars speed. So you can have a little bit of utility from your Tomoe Gozen. That is the only thing that I would personally use her. So if you ever want to put her as a main commander, she can always do some gathering or she has some mobility so you can send her whatever. Nothing else. Talents only work from the main commander. So as long as she is a second in command, her talents do not count. That's why only for utility. <clears throat> All right, so that is pretty much about Tomoe Gozen. Lancelot is the second dude on the list. I really like the picture about Lancelot because they actually gave him a sword that he can hold it for as long as he wants. Because while we are keep talking and I'm going to keep talking about him, you're going to notice that he's not going to hinge a little bit that sword. So that's for how long he can keep it. Alright, so Lancelot, he's a Kvary commander and mobility plus versatility. Now you can notice that my Lancelot is 6 star and I'm going to tell you the story. Why my Lancelot is 6 star. Well, my server was at the beginning at some point, like any other servers. And obviously everyone was using the Kvary, uh, marching from camp to camp and just killing the farms. My alliance was suffering the same type of situation. We were having the same problems with this kind of players, just killing the farms. I had to do a, somehow call it a desperate measure to get a Kavari commander high up. I was trying to get my Minamoto, but it was very expensive because I was investing in Charles Martel at that moment. So I had to get a Kavari commander high in talents so I can have a very mobile Kavari. That is also the reason when I upgraded my uh, Minamoto to have some attack bonus and nuke in the same time for my Kavari. So that is the main reason why my Lancelot is a 6 star right now. So I got my Lancelot a 6 star so I can have enough talents to put enough mobility on my Kavari so I can chase them away. Not because they were strong or not because this uh, <laughs> Lancelot is very strong, but because of the mobility. Because Lancelot also has March Speed. This guy has March Speed as well, plus the March Speed from the talent. I was be able to keep all these guys away and I was protecting a lot my Alliance members. So this is, this is the reason. Now, same as uh, Tomoe Gozen, Lancelot is very, very easy to, to upgrade. You get a lot of his sculptures from opening silver chest and not to mention from the gold chest. They have a high chance. You can now check on the gold chest the chances that they have to drop. So you should not make any problems that you will not be able to upgrade it. My advice, if you actually want to get him that high or invest in him that, that much, experience and all that, just for mobility. This would be the only advice if you want to keep your Lancelot as a main commander. He can be used as a main commander, but I would advise you to use it only for mobility. What is that supposed to mean? That's supposed to mean that only killing either soft targets, like lower level tier than you, or in a battlefield, when there is a huge group of battles. If you manage to go around the battlefield and, I don't know, get behind the enemy lines, when they are retreating their armies, if you want to make them suffer even more, you can just kill those soft targets, because they are soft, obviously. 30, 40,000 retreating army, you have 100, 150,000 cavalry, you will smash them down very fast. So you'll just kill them and give them more pain, more 
killing to do and so on. Or killing farms, if that is what you like or that is what you want. So these are the only good things if you want to keep your Lancelot as a main commander. This is the talent tree uh, for my Lancelot. So you can see that at 6 star level 50 I managed to get full cavalry path. And the most important mobility part. March speed and hasty departure. Hasty departure works if you move from building to building. As long as you, I've noticed that you need to wait like 2 or 3 seconds. Or I think you need to wait until the first hasty departure is depleted. This is the two things that I noticed about hasty departure. So if you want to abuse the hasty departure, you need to try it out a lot. You need to see how the mechanics work for the hasty departures. It would be in your best interest. Instead, just, just trying once or twice and then asking why it's not working. This is the things that I noticed about hasty departures. You need to wait to, need to, wait to deplete the first one, then enter a building, stay one or two seconds there, leaving the building and so on. This is the way you can abuse hasty departure, so you can have the 60% mar speed. <clears throat> now in terms of uh, of another talents for our boy Lancelot this is a, another talent pad for Lancelot so you can see that this talent pad is done up to level uh, 36 so if you just want to have a utility for your Lancelot you just want to unlock his skills that would bring him at 4 star and level 36. Or if you just want to keep him at level 29 or just have like, I don't know, 28 talents. At level 30 he has 4 stars unlocked. So if he's le level 30 he can unlock his 4 stars so he can max out his skills. If that is your choice. And at that point you can do this utility talent path. So if you don't want to use your Lancelot as a main commander, if you don't use him for that purpose, just to have mobility and, as I mentioned, killing soft targets, then you can build this utility path. You have a lot of Mars speed, and all you have to do in this utility build, especially with Lancelot, you can use one tier 1 cavalry. Exactly, just one. One tier 1 cavalry. What is that useful for? For example, you want to go collect a rune. You know, uh, I don't know, you just want to go attack a flag. If the flag is empty, all you need is just one soldier. One tier one soldier and very fast troops. You do that, he's gonna sprint. He's gonna have like nose on that horse. <laughs> if, if you understand what I'm trying to say. You're, you're gonna start burning that flag. If it's unguarded, don't get me wrong. If it's unguarded and uh, if there is no one in the flag. Because obviously whoever targets you and just hit you once, just one soldier is, is going down, that's it. So this is what this utility can be used for. Or any other movement plans that you have in your mind or you, you, want, to, you want to use him, is gonna help you a lot. That's why he has a little bit of gathering over there as well, so if you want to use him for gathering, we have 15% gathering speed. This is why this is a utility path for your boy Lancelot. That's why it doesn't go any further. Because if you want to get him further, that means he can be used as a main commander. So it's best if you do full cavalry, like I just showed you. Right. Now, I'm going to finish with the blue ones. Where are they? I'm going to finish with the blue ones and then I'm going to go with the green ones. Since I started with the blue ones, I'm going to finish with the blue ones. I'm going to talk about Sarka and Gaius Marius. Now, there is the main skill of Sarka that is seamless with the Gaius Marius, which is the Mars speed reduction 30%. Mars speed reduction 30%. Now, the only two places, I'm going to talk about both of them in the same, in the same time. The only two places where these two commanders will actually be viable in battle is during the Lost Temple fight. In the Lost Temple fight, if you are assigned to kill the Believers, that's how they are called, the Believers, 
then you should have at least one army with either Sarka or Gaius Marius a second in command so you can slow down the believers and it will be the best choice if you put them a second in command to a nuker so that way they'll generate regenerate more rage so they will keep slowing down the believers if you want to use in two armies as a second in command that's even better more mars speed reduction the believers are going to go much slower that is the only place where you can use them in combat any other place than that they are really bad they are gatherers that's it end of story end of the line point time out <clears throat> now in terms of gathering talents i'm just gonna pop up the picture right now just give me a moment i have them done in in different in different place and um, should have put all the pictures in one place and uh, i'm sitting Yeah, I was covering down the... There we go. For now, I'm gonna stay here. So this is the only talent pad. You can see it's John of Arc, but it doesn't matter. I didn't want to do just a picture just to show the same gathering talent pad. Because it's the same. The same that you have to use on, on your... Uh, Gaius Marius is the same that you have to use on your Sarka. This is the same one, green, red, blue, and yellow. That's it. No more to talk about it. This is the best gathering talent pad that you can take for them. You can see the pink one is still up to level 40, but four star, the pink one. That is gonna be Mars speed for your siege units. Cause obviously at some point you're only going to use siege units for gathering. Because they are the best one, they have the, the largest load. If you obtain the last one on, on the yellow one, that means you're going to have 25% more gathering speed. You're going to get 6% more resources from the blue one. So from the blue one at level 27, you get 6% more resources. And from the yellow one at level 37, you get 25% more gathering speed. So I'm gonna take off the picture. I'm very smart at it. I'm gonna put myself back. So you can see she is a level 27 and I have this one unlocked, the more the better. Now if I ever gonna get her to 37 I'm gonna do this one superior tools which is 25% more gathering speed that is the same path that you have to change to take for your constants now Constance again she's a blue commander the only way you can obtain her sculptures I have to mention this is from the expedition now you're probably noticing that I only maxed out her second skill gathering skill if you look at her, at her fourth skill, she can obtain 10% more resources if this one is maxed out. Now, the question you have to ask yourself, is it worth to spend all those expedition coins to get 8% more resources? For myself, the answer is no. I have about 200,000 expedition coins. I could probably spend, I don't know how it's gonna take me, 20, 30, 40,000. And I could probably max her out. But I don't want to spend that large amount of expedition coins just to get a couple of more resources. This is something you might want to keep in mind. Why? Because if we go into the expedition, if we go into the shop, you can get freaking legendary stuff. Like this one. Blessed Dazzling Stylus Sculpture. This one costs 4,000 coins. So you can get a lot of legendary stuff that are very hard to obtain into the game using the expedition coins. So it can come in very handy having expedition coins all the time. So that is the reason why I'm not maxing out constants. 
All I need her is for gathering, she's doing great. Another 8% resources, it might help. But the legendary commanders, they are much more important. So again, for your constants, in terms of talents, she has the same gathering plan like I just showed you on uh, the picture with Joan of Arc. So if you want to go back, it's the same gathering talent path. Alright, so that's about uh, the blue ones. Constance, she can never do battle. She can never do battle with uh, 150 direct damage factor and another 150 and all three gathering skills. She cannot do battle. She doesn't know what is, that means. Look at her. She's Someone just put a crown on her head, so that's why she's a gatherer. Someone just made her queen and that's it. <laughs> queen of Sicily. Right. <clears throat> now is the turn of the green ones which is the advanced so the blue ones are the elite these guys are the advanced centurion centurion is one of the six gatherers and i have to say that he is an excellent gatherer and he is the only one that i use as a second in command to any other gatherers now sarka she is my gold digger the reason why, because of her gathering speed bonus, 18%. And since I'm talking about the gathering, I'm just going to give you a couple more tips and advices about gatherers. The first tip that I want to give you is that you can check the gathering from each and every commander that you have. So I'm going to pick Cleopatra, for example. You can see that her bonus gathering speed is toned, 30%. Other resources 20%, so it would make logic to use her on stone. Then I go on constants. Bonus gathering speed is wood 20%, then the rest one is 15%. It would make sense to put her on, on wood. Then you have Gaius Marius 20% gathering speed on food. It would make sense to put him on food to gather food. John of Arc, 25% gathering speed bonus on anything. So she is a beast when it comes to gathering, so she can do anything. Talents, like I just showed you, all the 37, she's missing the pink ones. Because I don't need speed on my, my gathering units. They are doing alright. And then we have Sarka, which has me I mentioned that she is a gold digger. She has 18% gathering speed on uh, everything. And if I put second in command, Centurion, which is another 10% gathering speed, that brings 28% gathering speed on anything I send them to. And I mostly send them for gold. Because, you know, she's a gold digger and they kind of match up. You know, blonde hair, blonde hair, this is a handsome guy. She's a good looking chick. They make a very nice pair. So this was just a side note talking about uh, the commanders, about the gatherers in case you are not doing it the same so to try to maximize your gathering centurion she is a gatherer as, as well as i mentioned i use him as a second in command so basically all you need is this skill unlocked that's basically all you need you manage to unlock this skill you manage to max him out and you put him as a second in command to someone and just in case you want to use him as a main commander his level 21 would be advisable to be 27 if he ever goes the main, so he can get additional 6% resources. But I don't really use him as a main commander. <clears throat> right, so again, gatherer, that's it, end of story. Hey there. Wanna play Mark's game? woman. <clears throat> Mark's woman, she is completely useful, useless anywhere. This is the one commander that you should not invest a single talent point. I know she's the first commander that <laughs> she it's, I actually get, except your main commander, so except your starting commander, next one is her. And I know that, but she is really, really useless. If you want to use her for utility, because obviously she has a peacekeeping talent, so because she has a peacekeeping talent, if you go on this path, you can unlock 18% march speed, but even for that, I wouldn't invest in her. You, you have other green or blue commanders that you can use them for utility. 
so I wouldn't really bother investing in her at all if some people done it I do apologize about it and there's nothing to apologize about but she is really bad 10% damage bonus to barbarians 5% archers defense 5% archers attack and Andrew damage factor that is not a commander you should invest in now it brings us to the last two guys dragon lancer and city keeper i'm gonna leave the city keeper for the last because i have a little bit to talk about him since they modified the talents they modified his uh, talent tree as well he used to have a really bad combination talent tree but now he has a really good one so i'm gonna talk a little bit about city keeper now the next one is Dragon Lancer. Now I mentioned about Lancelot if you want to use him for utility. Now I have to say that Dragon Lancer can be a better utility if you, for that purpose. So if you want to use a commander just for utility like I mentioned, you just want to go and, and grab runes or you just want to attack a flag and you need just one soldier, a tier, a tier 1 cavalry, just one unit. So it can move really really fast then dragon lancer does a better job than lancelot for that why is because if you max out his second skill dragon lancer has 10 percent march speed while lancelot only has five percent march speed so you get a little bit more march speed for that particular reason and now i'm gonna go and i'm gonna show you his talents where is it dragon lancer there you go. Because I have built his... Or I'm not covering anyone. No, I'm not co covering any of them. It's basically this, the same thing. The same thing that I've drawn on, on Lancelot. But he does a much better utility part because his second skill grants you 10% mass speed. So you can use him or Lancer for the same purpose. Just having a large amount of Mars speed just using one troop and sprinting for various reasons gathering runes attacking flags or anything that you find useful using low level cavalries or your cavalry your notice if you want to do this test yourself if you use one tier four or if you use one tier one you're noticing the difference trust me just try it out so this is a utility talent pad that i would go for dragon lancer and you have again green and red you have the talents and the levels in which uh, you will be able to obtain what i have draw if you want to go any further with your dragon lancer i have to say that it might be better to just go full cavalry and then mobility path so it's at level 37 that is four star so you don't need to go any further above that Now, City Keeper, now I mentioned about City Keeper, and I said that I'm gonna talk a little bit about him. The reason before his talent was not including infantry, he was including the integration or synthesis or whatever names they were keep giving it uh, as the yellow one. Now they gave him infantry. Now, because they gave him infantry and attack, he becomes a very unique green commander, and I have to say that I have to, to take Dragon Lancer out first and uh, I have to say that he can be a very usable infantry commander at the beginning now in terms of his skills he has increased troops defense 15% for 5 seconds this is pretty remarkable even if it's just 15% defense but it's remarkable for 5 seconds as a green commander then you have infantry health, infantry attack, and infantry defense. Well, this is very low. This is very low. But City Keeper or Dragon Lancer or any other green or blue commanders, they are very easy to upgrade. And I just give you a fair example just to see how easy it is to upgrade the green one. You can see on the first level it requires 60 per 60 experience. And then you can see on the legendary ones it is 120, so it's double. So by the time someone gets a legendary to let's say 45 or maybe even sooner, 
42 or 43 your city keeper is probably close to 60 at that point you have an insane amount of talents advantage against him so keep that in mind I have to say and I have to give you a fair warning before you want to jump up and say whoa city keeper yeah i'm gonna start working on him i'm gonna start leveling him up so before you start you start jumping and uh, start thinking or investing in him i have to give you a couple of fair warnings if you're going to invest in your city keeper in the beginning it's not gonna be bad you're gonna get him to level 60 very fast you're gonna have a wonderful talent tree you're gonna troll on other people with your city keeper, uh, smashing the <laughs> out of them. But later on, you're gonna start losing. As people are going to start upgrading their epic and their legendaries, they're gonna have a lot more bonus over you with with the, the skills from their commander. So you're gonna start losing slowly. So it's gonna be, I would say, a dead investment. It's gonna be really good, so trust me, in the beginning of, of the game, maybe even two months into the game, probably even a little bit longer after that, it's, it's gonna be wonderful, you're gonna do some, some serious stuff, but after that, it's gonna be dropping drastically, you know, it's just, I don't know, it's just like you throw a stone into, into water, just going down, just like that, so it's gonna be really good at the beginning, because you're gonna win by the amount of talents that you have but you're gonna drop drastically so this is a fair warning that you have to keep in mind if you plan to invest in your city keeper now i also built the talent path for our boy city keeper and this would be the only one that i would personally use if i have to work on him obviously infantry talent tree and once you reach the blue ones or once once you've done the blue ones the first one that you have to complete on yellow is effortless i didn't know how to write it or how to put it there so that would bring you to level 54 so once you get him to level 54 he is kind of complete and very strong infantry commander as i mentioned you will dominate by the amount of talents that you have if you want to invest in him at the beginning but you will lose later on when people upgrade their skill on their commanders for example if you have a five one 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 richard is gonna be much better than a <laughs> much much better than your city keeper is gonna have a lot more even if that richard is let's say five star so if that richard is five star with 5 1 1 1 he's gonna be much better than your city keeper but that's gonna be your choice if you want to go ahead with your city keeper you can troll as i mentioned a lot of players at the beginning of the game maybe let's say two months but that's it after two months he's done his days of trolling are done <clears throat> but yeah so that's it I have to say about uh, elite and advanced commanders, as I mentioned, talents and everything. Now who you could pair up city keeper, this was supposed to be a pairing uh, video as well, but there's nothing to say about the gatherers or who you should pair your gatherers with or utility commanders to get some runes, you don't really need pairs for that. <clears throat> who you could pair city keeper well any other infantry commander or very good other commanders like CPO, John of Arc but the best ones if you want to use city keeper as a main commander he's not going to be good as a second in command so trust me second in command no nada that's it the only way as I mentioned, it works in the beginning of the game for up to two months maximum. So you can dominate by the amount of talents that you have. And the second in command, obviously the best choices are Richard the first, 
then Charles Martel, then if you want to go for uh, for epic ones would be Elji Mundok. After that it comes Scipio, Boudica, Frederick, other general commanders that can boost all kind of troops. Again, these are my tips and advices, these are my thoughts ab ab about it. So until next time, I hope I did cover everything about these guys. Until next time, this is your boy Legendroni signing out. Peace out, yo. Take care. Be safe out there.